lies. What an annoying sound. And what annoying creatures. Small, dirty, they buzz around and they land on our food. They touch it, but maybe before they landed on garbage, on someone's sweat, or even worse, on someone's poo. So gross. They rub their six legs together and they look into your eyes with their big, massive eyes. And they're probably thinking, hmm, how can I upset this person today? <laughs> and they start crawling on you on a hot summer day while you try to have a nap. Can you feel it? So disturbing. I bet no one here like flies. Uh, don't worry, you're not the only one. Since the dawn of history, men didn't like flies. Because, well, apart from being annoying, they always have been associated with dirt, decomposition, and death. The first document that sees flies is dated 5,000 years ago, and there is a dead gazelle and a fly. The attention to the details, normally given to the noble animal, here are given to the fly as well. There was a period of wars, of an increase of population, increase of garbage and dead people, basically the perfect storm to have more flies around. So men could not don't notice the presence of flies. To the point that in the first zoology book that was produced 4,000 years ago, there were already 10 species of flies out of the 400 animals known at the time. Ancient Egyptians knew so much about flies and decomposition that they used to mummify their bodies. But even more interesting, they used to put small papyrus in the mouth of the mummies, stating maggots will not turn into flies within you, as a prey for the preservation of the remains. In the Middle Age, the fly is associated with the devil, and the devil was known as Balzebu, the lord of flies. And taking origin from this, the war cry, Zabub, Zabub, of the Kalmyk, the people of the steppe, while they were killing their enemy in a battle. In the Renaissance period, again, the fly is the devil. And it's pretty easy to find portraits with the Holy Mary holding a baby Jesus, both surrounded by angels. They were protecting them from a fly, the devil. But not just the devil. Many other gods are able to transfigure their body in a fly like Aerinon, the prince of death, the demon of the composition in the Greek mythology. And even in the German mythology, the fly did something evil. The hammer of Thor was made by a gnome, but this gnome was disturbed while he was doing his job, and was disturbed by a fly. But this fly was not just a common fly, it was actually Loki who transfigured his body in a fly because he didn't want for Thor to have an infallible hammer. And flies in the history and culture were also used as a plague, as a method of torture. Hera used to send flock of flies against the loved children and the lovers of her husband Zeus. I moved to Australia a few years ago and someone told me that the reason why I couldn't understand the English spoken by Australians was because, well, Australians do not open their mouth while they speak in fears of flies. <laughs> well, I guess this was the way for flies to torture me because I moved from beautiful Italy to Australia just to study flies. Crazy, huh? <laughs> well, but have you ever looked to a fly carefully. Have you ever seen the amazing colors, the precision in the way they fly, or their behavior? Plus, have you ever actually thought about their role in the big scheme of nature? Close your eyes. Keep your eyes shut and listen to this. Nature can be beautiful and can sound beautiful, like this fresh stream in a forest. However, this is actually 
the sound of millions of maggots crawling in a carcass. Charles Baudelaire, a French poet of the 1800s, wrote, blowflies were buzzing in the putrid belly, black battalions of maggots were making the noise of fresh water or the wind. Flies can be fascinating in their shape and in their behavior. Their color, for example. They can be blue, they can be green, they can be metallic, like gems, or like the rainbow. There are several documents in the history and culture that sees flies looking like rainbows. In the Bible, for example, in the Assyrian and Babylonia as well. The rainbow and the flies, flies looking like a rainbow, were the symbol of the renewed alliance between the men and the gods after a flood. And colors again. Flies can be black and yellow, like wasps or bees. These are harmless flies, but they look very dangerous. This is a mimicry for them to avoid predators. But again, there was a little misunderstanding in the history and the culture. It was thought that only noble animals, like horses or lions, were decomposed by noble insects, like bees. But common animals were, were decomposed by flies. There is a passage in the Bible that sees Samson going to visit the carcass of the lion that he killed a few days before, and you can see a beehive crawling in the lion. And the Egyptians again. Egyptians thought the fly was an holy animal because it was the keeper of the soul of the ancestors. But the behavior of the fly was the behavior of the best of the warriors. Impudent, long-lasting, and brave, the best warrior. Therefore, the best warrior were used to be awarded by the fly of the honor, or the golden fly. And even a woman was awarded with the fly of honor. And flies can be also helpful. Have you ever heard about something called the maggot therapy? Maggot can clean wounds and lesions. They were used a lot on battle camps to save the arms and the limbs of soldiers. And nowadays, they're used a lot in different hospitals, in particular to cure diabetic ulcers, as well as helping in the scarring of burned tissues. So it's kind of a strange, controversial, and contradictory relationship, the one between flies and men. Now that you know a little bit more, do you maybe like flies? Mm. I don't think I was able to convince you. Well, give me one more chance. Give me one more chance to give flies the benefit of the doubt. Listen to this. Guys, guys, over here, I found something. Can you hear the flies? There's a body. There is a body of a victim. There are flies. Believe or not, flies can be the key to solve a crime. Imagine a murder. Someone has been killed by a weapon or by poison. And the body has been, has been concealed somewhere in the city apartment, in the bush, in a suitcase, or even underwater. After some time, the body will be discovered. It could be still recognizable as a human body, or could be just a collection of bones. In any case, investigators and a pathologist will be called to investigate. This is what we call a forensic case, a case that will be investigated and prosecuted in the light of the law in force. Sherlock Holmes is not welcomed, because all around Sherlock Holmes do not exist. The only way to solve a case is through the collaboration, the communication, and the professionalism of different experts of different scientific disciplines communicating and collaborating together. The pathologist, for example. The pathologist can be very, very helpful and powerful when the body is in the environment for a very short amount of time. 
he will be able to identify the cause of death and estimate a time since death. But in about three days of time, the situation can change drastically. The gut microbiome that was friendly while the person was alive is now taking over. The odor of the decomposition are attracting flies. They are going on the body, starting the decomposition process. In a hot period, in about five days, we can lose the 90% of the mass of a body. So basically, in summer, in about a week, we can pass from a body to a collection of bones because fly ate everything. That means the flies can compromise a case. What we can do? Well, we had to think creatively. We had to think out of the box. The same flies that with their activity, feeding on the body, are destroying all the evidence that are pivotal to close a case, they are actually not stealing. They are saving, storing, shielding information in their tiny little bodies. Flies are no thieves. Flies are keepers of the secrets of the after death. And to unlock these secrets, the only way is to call a bug whisperer, a forensic entomologist. The forensic entomologist will arrive at the scene, will collect the insects and the information about the environment, especially the temperature. Back in the lab, the, the forensic entomologist will be able to identify the species of insects. And together with the environmental temperature, he will use the table of growth to identify a minimum time since death. Because basically, flies and insects are biological clocks. And time is pivotal in the investigation because it's the only way that can complete the crime scene reconstruction. And a right crime scene reconstruction is the only way to avoid miscarriages of justice. I said biological clocks, but flies are actually a little bit more than that because, well, they don't sign just the time they can actually give way more information. So they're more like a smart watch rather than just a clock. For example, they can give you information about location. Flies look more or less all the same. But under the lens of a microscope, you can appreciate that they are way different from each other. And they are different because they live in different environment. So if we find a body in the bush, and this body is colonized by insects. They don't belong to the bush. We have ground to infer that that is not our primary crime scene. The primary crime scene was somewhere else, maybe the city. Then the body was moved, for some reason, to the secondary crime scene, to the place where the body was found. So the flies, again, can give us information for the crime scene reconstruction. Location again, but on the body itself. The flies do not lay eggs everywhere. There are specific places on the body, and these places are normally not the hands because they're too tough to be eaten by them. But if we find maggots on the hands of a deceased person, we have ground to infer that maybe on the hands there were lesions, maybe defense wounds. So again, this can give us information about cause of death, circumstances of death, and again, crime scene reconstruction. Something more about your smartwatch. What does it can do? Maybe give information about your fitness health, because you are what you eat, yes? The same with flies. They eat a dead body, but if the body died because of an overdose of drugs, what do you do? You normally call a toxicologist, but the toxicologist can work until a time. Then the decomposition takes over, and only the insects can be helpful, because the insects are what they eat, and if they eat a body full of drugs, I can use the bugs to identify the drugs. But you know, drugs affect your body, and they will affect also the body of the flies. So another question that the forensic entomologist has to answer to is, are these maggots on the body big because they are old? 
oh, the artist flies big because they're full of drugs. In our research, we found that, for example, methamphetamine and ketamine make flies big, or nicotine makes flies small. In our lattice research, we are checking the effect of a little blue pill on the flies. What do you reckon? Flies are getting big, are getting small, or maybe just hard? <laughs> Stay tuned, it's gonna be published soon. <laughs> Last thing about your smart watch is about memories. You store, for example, information with uh, notes and also pictures. But it's the same with flies again. They eat the flesh of a body, but they don't choose what to eat. So if the flesh is mixed with body fluids, we will have information about these body fluids. And if we analyze the DNA of a fly, we can identify the DNA of the fly, the DNA of the victim, and maybe the DNA of an external, a foreign body fluids, maybe semen that can be present in or on a body. So we have ground to infer that maybe this person was assaulted or there was just an intercourse. So again, crime scene reconstruction considering the people involved in the story. Pretty powerful. As you can see, Lady Justice is blindfolded. But flies can give her big eyes, six hands, and wings to fly high. So next time they, you see a fly and you want to kill it, just stop and think, what if I am killing the only witness to solve a crime? <laughs> Thank you.